Decent. That looks pretty decent. Hello, Voodoo Chest. Hello, Cindy Lee. Hello, Donnie. Judy and Josh and Lucretia. 3WJDP3. <laughs> Debbie Roger. Deb Drew. Oh, getting started a little early today. <laughs> Hope that's okay. <laughs> Hope that's okay. I was building up a nice audience going at, I don't know, 6.30. But I went to bed early last night. It's one of my best habits. I talk a lot about habits. One of my very best habits is just going to bed early. <laughs> I'm really getting old, I guess. I don't feel like I'm getting old. I feel... Like I'm getting better. Because uh, I think the habits are starting to accumulate. And the good habits are doing good things. And the bad habits have removed. Or no longer doing bad things. And uh, again, I think going to bed early is a really good habit. I used to usually go to bed when I fell asleep. And usually uh, me falling asleep was under the influence of alcohol. And oftentimes on the couch holding a bottle of Heineken. Sometimes I, and I've talked about this before, wake up to the cold feeling of uh, a spilt beer on my leg or in my crotch. None of that's good. So uh, anyway, yeah. So going to bed early is such a nice habit. And at 9 o'clock last night, I said, it's time for bed. <laughs> Went upstairs and... I don't know, got cozy and comfy under the covers and laid there for a while. Might have stared at my phone for a minute or two and quickly started drifting off. And uh, good morning, Linda from Kentucky. And Imagine says we do get better over time. Yeah. I saw a really old lady at Starbucks the other day. And, you know, she was really, I mean, really old. She was in a wheelchair and she was all shriveled up. And I was thinking, wow, how good she must have with all, if she put in those good habits every day. People talk about, uh, you know, starting a savings program. If you're 25 years old and you put $100 every two weeks into an IRA, you'll have a $5 million when you're 65. And uh, I don't think that really entices kids because they don't imagine life at 65. Uh, but either way, I think the same theory holds true uh, for habits. If you put a good habit in your uh, life or your daily routine when you're young and you keep adding to it, uh, over time you're just going to get better and you're just going to feel better and things around you are going to look different and uh, you're probably going to smile a little bit more. But good morning, <laughs> good morning, good morning to you and a special good morning to you Cincinnati Joe. My name is Ken Tracy. Mm. Moving a little slow this morning. And this is Coffee with Ken. I feel like the sloth from the movie. Uh, forget what movie it was. It was a cartoon with a fox and a rabbit. Uh, and, and it was like animals going crazy. But there were sloths working at the bank and they were moving really slow. And I kind of personally found it annoying. And maybe that's what the movie makers were trying to accomplish. Uh, but yeah, I feel Zootopia. Wow, thank you. It was Zootopia. It was Zootopia. And yeah, I don't know if anyone else saw it. I mean, obviously a couple people saw it. But I don't know. I'm sure it was supposed to be funny. 
but it was kind of annoying how slow the sloths were moving and they made him repeat everything. <laughs> That's kind of the way I feel, like a sloth in Zootopia. Uh, Jordan's got transportation to work. Well, good for you, Jordan. Drive safe. Um, but anyway, again, this is, uh, my name's Ken Tracy and this is Coffee with Ken. It is Monday morning. It is about 5.37 a.m. And it is April 29th. Happy Monday. I cringed when I heard it was, thought it was April 29th because I, uh, and I talked about it before, but God bless me with four beautiful kids. And I have two older girls from a first marriage and two little ones from a second marriage. And, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, two of them were born on April 30th and, uh, uh, yeah, two of them were born on April 30th. And so I've got a big day tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do or, uh, what have you. And, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm excited for their birthdays. One's turning 18, one's turning three. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Justin says his dad just died from cancer and he's hurting. I'm sorry to hear that, Justin. Uh, you know, I, yeah, life's hard. And uh, we lose our parents. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, and losing your dad's hard and losing your mom's hard and what have you. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're doing better and, uh, uh, life teaches you things. And I think the passing of time is natural and, uh, uh, again, teaches us things. Yeah. Thank you, Cincinnati. Hey, Joe, you were on so short. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a show I've been doing for a long, long time and it's a show about me talking and it's a show about me sharing some feelings. And it's a show about me kind of sharing some adventures. Good morning, RJ. And uh, um, kind of sharing the ups and downs in life. Sharing some things that happen and some emotions we go through. And I mean, right now I'm feeling great. Woke up at 4.50 this morning. Woke up to the sound of rain pitter-pattering outside. And had the window open and again, had a great night's sleep. So I'm feeling really good and feeling really relaxed, which is a nice change of pace, uh, over the last, uh, 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 several days have been battling fear and <laughs> still now that I bring it up, it kind of triggers the adrenaline and the fight or flight syndrome that I've been dealing with. So I should put that in the back burner. Uh, but I did go to church yesterday because it was Sunday and uh, enjoy the church I go to. And although the sermon wasn't exactly, they were talking about the transition from the lead pastor to the next lead pastor. The lead pastor had done it for 35 years and it was uh, 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 time for him to uh, pass the baton to the next one. And... Uh, um, Sorry about that. But anyway, I didn't get a ton from the sermon, and that's okay. Uh, I don't think you need to get a huge uh, message from everything, and you don't have to, everything doesn't resonate, and every Sunday is not going to be your best. Uh, but I had a great service, and I got what I was supposed to get from it. And I think, like I said a lot, everything works out exactly as it's supposed to. And the one word that stuck with me uh, was, you know, fear and how often fear is mentioned in the Bible. And uh, uh, I realized I'd been living in fear and struggling with some things and uh, I needed to let that go so I could move forward in a healthy fashion. But anyway, I'm moving slow, slow. My introductions got totally uh, thrown off. Um, for those who have been watching a while, you know this isn't just a show uh, about me talking. 
it's also a show about me uh, sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me, and I'm so excited to take my first sip. I think that jolt of caffeine is going to go into my brain and psh, trickle down through my body and make me feel oh so good. So with that in mind, I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, uh, that you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Mmm. Uh, uh, standard of buddies for a few days. He doesn't drink coffee anymore, but he has a Keurig and a bunch of, had, had a tub of these little Keurig cups. Um, now his tub, which was up to here, is, you know, got a few left. And I made a note to myself to get to the store and, Get some replacement Keurig cups for them. And for me, because I still got a couple more days here. And I hate to run out and realize that all we have left in the Keurig is hot chocolate or chai tea or <laughs> something like that. Have to change the name of my show. I wouldn't want to do that. I've spent five years branding it as it is. Hmm. Good morning, Justin. How are you? All oh, is the best K-Cups. Leave it to RJ to give the coffee recommendations. I appreciate RJ for that. He'll often send me pictures of sales at Meyer grocery store. And I think you're right about all the... Hello, Sandra Lynn. How are you? Thought of you a little bit the last couple of days, Sandra Lynn. Not too much. I think I talked about you yesterday. <laughs> Never met you. Uh, I, but I know you're local, so uh, that always makes me smile a little bit. Uh, it's going real well, Justin. Just got up a little bit ago, and I'm moving kind of slow, and I'm kind of feeling content and at peace and looking forward to my day. And although we've, I got, yesterday was kind of an anxious day for me and a frustrating day because it was windy and the rain, you know, and it's typical late spring weather with a lot of wind and a lot of rain. Uh, but that combined with a few things I wanted to get done for the day, uh, I don't know, kind of had me feeling agitated a little bit. And uh, uh, feels good to have that past and have that, you know, not behind me, but at least behind me for the day. Because emotions return and uh, I used to think they defined me. And if I was kind of feeling grumpy or agitated or in a bad mood that I was an agitated, angry, grumpy person, uh, and I think that belief, I started owning it and it started becoming, uh, part of who I was. Uh, but I realized, um, <laughs> you know, we all have those emotions and we all have ups and downs and we all have highs and lows. And, uh, by accepting that and not fighting it and just going, Hey, I'm feeling a little agitated today. Uh, let's just go through my day and see what happens and go to church and go to the gym and uh, play with my babies and uh, go through my day. Suddenly, by the end of the day, I was feeling good. And uh, 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 I don't know, like I said, just felt so good to get home and lay down in bed at a nice hour and get ready for uh, today. Spilled some coffee on this side. I have to turn it around. Do you want a big coffee stain on my cup? Uh, we'll have to meet at Starbucks before I move. I don't know when I'm moving. Sandra Lynn, you've had like two years to meet me at Starbucks. And uh, <laughs> you've never done it. I think I've tried. Hey, I'll see you at the farmer's market. See you at a wrestling meet. <laughs> see you at Starbucks. I'm just around the corner. But no. And that's Okay. I think we all have our relationships that are meant to be. And uh, I was thinking about it a little bit this morning. When I was getting up, I looked at a message I'd gotten um, on my phone. Uh, Jay, the coffee is doing great. Uh, good morning, MJ from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thank you guys for tuning in. 
But I do a fair, I was a realtor for 17 years and I talk about life on my show and the ups and downs and anything that comes to mind. And I always clip these videos into reels and shorts and TikToks for various social media platforms. And uh, um, I repost them and some of them get huge audiences and a lot of viewership. And, you know, I've had... I don't know, a couple million views on a video I did about the stock brokerage business. And I've had maybe a million views I did about the real estate business. And because of that, uh, you have a lot of people reaching out and asking you individualized questions and uh, long looking for long answers. And I had a guy reach out to me saying, hey, he likes my videos. But then he gave me kind of his story and wanted to know why I left real estate. And I thought about it, and honestly, it's not that I don't care if we were talking at Starbucks, it'd be one thing. Uh, but I did, I've done many videos about exactly why I left real estate. And, you know, my first instinct is to help somebody or answer their questions or, uh, you know, always get back to somebody as quick as possible or hold the door open or whatever. But then I kind of thought about it and... Uh, yeah, I can't answer every question or, you know, and I feel pressure about this, kind of being everyone's shoulder to cry on, uh, because I think people feel they know me in a way that maybe they don't just because, uh, you know, I'm a, so open and me just drinking coffee and, uh, you get people watching and you get people that see your videos and that it resonates with them and connects with them. Uh, you know, but if I spent all day answering every question again, why I left real estate, I, I wanted to say, but I didn't want to be rude. Well, go look at the videos. I've done 10 of them about exactly why I left real estate. And I don't feel like typing my answer out, uh, you know. And I wish, you know, I wish I could or I wish I had a pat answer I could give or whatever, <laughs> copy, paste, <laughs> for these reasons. Felt kind of bad about it, but then I learned I had to let that go because uh, I got my own life and I got my own stuff and I got my own challenges and my own things and uh, uh, that it's okay. It's okay. MJ, where am I from? I am from uh, Naperville, Illinois. I live just outside of Chicago about, uh, uh, I don't know, 35 miles from Chicago. Might be moving. Had a lot of people wanting to know what's going on. <laughs> Some people that I consider friends that I used to work with that watch a lot of my videos will be sending me texts. And I go, hey, <laughs> do you care or do you just want in on the gossip? <laughs> and either way, that's okay. I appreciate them watching and I'm sure they care. And I've leaned on them and uh, at times when times were tough, uh, but, uh, <laughs> honestly, nothing's finalized a hundred percent and I'd hate to have to go back and explain to 10,000 people why I didn't take a position at a, <laughs> at wherever it might be <laughs> front page news, <laughs> the Ken daily. <laughs> I was wearing my shirt yesterday. The I am Knuff shirt. I feel it's kind of big and floppy for me. And it was a shirt that my uh, uh, daughters bought me for birthday, my birthday last year, because they knew I'd seen the Barbie movie. I did not like the Barbie movie. Don't hate me, women. Don't hate me for saying it, but I did not like the Barbie movie. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Ken is the bad guy in it. But anyway, <laughs> my daughters bought me a shirt that said, I am Knuff. And I wore it yesterday. It's the end of that story that I have for you there. So I'm going to drink a little more coffee, see what I have to say on this Monday morning, see if I want to wrap it up and uh, just get my day started. I'm about two and a half weeks behind on my video editing. So the shorts and the reels and the TikToks that you see coming out today are <laughs> were made two and a half weeks ago. And uh, it's kind of funny. Because, again, I'll have some friends watching it. And I talk about my emotions fairly freely on this show. And uh, if I'm feeling down or sad or anxious or whatever, agitated or happy or elated or 
stupendous. I'll kind of talk about it and I'll have a friend reach out and go, oh, can you doing okay? Oh yeah, no problem. That video was from two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> Feeling much better now. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I might be leaving as soon as like May 8th if I'm leaving. And I don't even know where I'm going for sure. But I think I do. But in the back of my mind, I'd kind of like to catch up all my video editing uh, by then. And there's just no way. There's just no way. I'm doing my best not to fall further behind. Because again, about three or four weeks ago, I started going consistently live every morning. And uh, because of that, I got 30 minutes of videos to... Uh, uh, <laughs> to... Uh, uh, edit every day and you know takes a while <laughs> it takes a while I have a lot of people reaching out a lot of I don't know fake accounts saying they're professional video editors and that they can help me I don't think they could I don't think they could I tried using an AI service to edit my videos once and I didn't like it uh, I think there's something about me doing it and my sense of humor and my sense of timing and my sense of what's important or what's stupid or what's great or what's awesome. And I'll tell you what, half the time I'm wrong. Uh, I know if I do a sobriety video, it tends to do well or a video about the brokerage business or the real estate business. Uh, but sometimes I think, hey, I've said this a hundred times before. Maybe I don't want to say it again. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I don't want to uh, I don't know. be moaning or groaning and uh, I'll post a video and uh, uh, almost not even want to post it or consider uh, deleting it for a while and all of a sudden it'll, it'll explode and I'll get 50,000 views on it and I'll go, huh, <laughs> I don't even know why that, it happened yesterday, it happened yesterday, I don't even know why, TikTok's so random. I don't, it's so random. It's like one out of a hundred videos. They say, we're going to put this out to a broader audience and it'll get like 10 or 20,000 views. And then the rest get like 300. And I don't think there's any rhyme or reason for it at all. Good morning, Shannon. Thank you. Uh, where the other social media platforms I work on seem to be a little more consistent. Yeah, you're going to get some that do really, really well. Uh, and some that not so well, but it seems a little more consistent and I haven't figured out a rhyme or a reason. And half the time I go, is this video even worth putting out there? And sometimes it'll explode and get huge watching. And, uh, sometimes it won't get really much at all. And, uh, I don't know. I think the more I stop looking at the results or the viewership or the likes or the, this or the comments or what have you, uh, the better it is for me. Because a little bit, I, you know, I got pride. I <laughs> spend some time adding what I think is the right music or the right words or the right length. <laughs> then it goes, da, 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 da. <laughs> Nobody cares. And, uh, you know. <laughs> so again, I think, and I've talked about it in various aspects, uh, I was scanning through uh, Facebook this morning and somebody on a sobriety page, I follow a few sobriety pages and said his confidence is low and he's struggling with things. And if there's any advice and my answer, I answered him and said, uh, I don't know, for me being sober uh, gives me confidence. It almost feels like a superpower that most don't have. And he should use the time he's saving, not hanging out in the bars or sitting on the couch watching sports with a beer in his hand to start working on himself and getting a little better and going on a little personal journey of self-improvement. And uh, his confidence will take care of itself. But the issue I think most people have is they might start a good habit. They might go to the gym today or read the Bible today or go to church on Sunday, but then and might do it for a week, but then they won't see any results in that first week. I got to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. They won't see results in that first week or the first month and they'll stop doing it. 
They'll stop going to the gym. They'll stop making the bed. They'll stop going to church. They'll stop being kind to themselves because they say it didn't work or they didn't lose any weight or they didn't gain any muscles. But it takes a while to build up momentum. And uh, again, I think habits, instilling good habits and removing bad habits are the most important thing we can do. And uh, uh, there's so many easy opportunities and I always recommend people start small. And I always say, well, make your bed today because most people don't. And if you make your bed, you feel a sense of accomplishment first thing. And anytime you walk into your bedroom the rest of the day, you go, hey, I got that done. I got that done. My room looks just a little bit better. And if my room looks a little bit better, I might as well pick up the socks that are laying on the floor because they look out of place. And if my bed's made and there's no longer socks on the floor, room's looking pretty good. I might as well go put on a nice shirt or brush my teeth or walk around the block or go to the gym or take a few moments to meditate or stretch out or what have you. There's so many areas uh, to get a little bit better and to work on ourselves and to be a little bit kinder. And it starts from within. And I think the best place uh, to be kind is to yourself and uh, the most important place and uh, to be nice to yourself. And uh, a bunch of ways to do that, a bunch of ways to do that. And if anybody out there is struggling and woke this morning with mean thoughts in their head, believe me, I've done that before. Pop on some positive affirmations or say a little prayer. Think about, I was going to say five things. Think about two things you're grateful for. And uh, I'm grateful for this bag of apples and this bunch of bananas that are in front of me. Because they're going to be a healthy snack when I'm done uh, talking to my phone. And they're going to fill my body with nutrients and fiber and be a great start to my day. And then you start looking around and thinking of other things you're grateful for. You're grateful for the pitter pattern of the rain at this early hour on the morning. Uh, But you're also grateful that the rain's scheduled to stop uh, here in an hour or two. Uh, And it kind of becomes fun. It becomes easy. It becomes a habit. And uh, again, it's not that I don't wake up with bad thoughts or get anxious or get agitated or uh, uh, struggle from time to time. I think just the periods of struggle, I used to wake up on feeling all those bad thoughts and kind of sulk about my whole day with those bad thoughts bouncing through my head. And I kind of chuckled about it as I got up this morning and laid in bed and thanked the Lord for the bed and the sheets and the day and the coffee and the audience and the friend that I had that was letting me stay at his house for a couple weeks Um, because I don't know, gets your mind in the right place and uh, uh, if your mind's in the right place I really think you can accomplish anything I really think you can accomplish anything and uh, I don't know, it starts from within so let me drink a little more coffee think if I have anything else to say to you. I don't want to get on my soapbox and preach too much. I don't want to be on a soapbox. Maybe that's what I'll change the name from. From Coffee with Ken to uh, preaching on my soapbox. (laughs) See if that helps or hurts the audience. Am I watching my kids today? Sharon, I do not believe so. Maybe I'll get to see them. Uh, I was with them yesterday. Uh, Shannon wants to know if Erin had her prom. She went to her boyfriend's prom uh, last Saturday. I FaceTimed her while she was getting ready. The room was filled with girls. Uh, Her boyfriend goes to a different high school in the same town. And uh, she was getting beautiful. And uh, uh, they had his prom on Saturday and her prom on uh, uh, coming up on Saturday. (laughs) It's funny, I was thinking about that. I mean, I'm still not cool, so believe me. I know I'm not cool, but I'm more confident in my lack of coolness. I'm more confident with who I am. So I think I'm, I mean, in that sense, cooler than I was in high school. But in high school, I was trying to be cool and trying to be like the cool kids or do like 
everybody else or what have you. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin, and I'm sure that's common in you know, high school. But either way, I never went to any dances. I did go to prom my senior year, uh, but I think that was the only dance I uh, <laughs> ever went to. I went with a young lady named Elizabeth, which is a pretty name, by the way, and a very versatile name, and a nice girl, and I had a pretty decent time. <laughs> I don't know, kids these days, and going to prom is such a big deal. Maybe it was back then. Maybe it was back then. And uh, uh, maybe it was back then. I was getting the tux and the corsage and what have you. But now they have proposals, they call them. I don't know if that's worldwide or, or countrywide or just a local thing. <laughs> but the boys really got to go above and beyond uh, to uh, ask a girl to uh, prom these days. <laughs> it's nerve-wracking enough knowing she might say no. I mean, I think I had a girl say no. Maybe it wasn't to prom, but it was to homecoming. And I think she made up some excuse. I think she just didn't want to go with me. Her name was Becky. I've forgiven her. <laughs> it's okay she didn't want to go with me. But uh, I was terrified. I was terrified. And I think technology's come so far that we're more comfortable, you know, using the phone or sending a text or doing whatever. But I had to pick up the family phone and dial her house number. <laughs> Maybe ask her mom if Becky's there. Try and small talk for a while because talking on the phone and sending my message, messages was much more problematic. You'd leave a note in a girl's locker room or, or lock, locker room locker or something like that. Or I don't know. Sneak a note in class. <laughs> But calling was a really big deal. And I was probably nervous about it for a week. <laughs> I called Becky and tried to small talk for a while. And I asked her to homecoming. <laughs> and she said no. She made up an excuse. <laughs> said she was already going with somebody. I don't even think she was. <laughs> That's okay. I've gotten over it going to speed dial my therapist because I got to talk through these issues with them. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, hope Becky's doing well. Actually, I know she is. She's uh, almost become a bit of a celebrity in her own right. Doing, uh, I don't want to go into specifics because less somebody watches, knows who it was. But again, nice woman. Uh, doing some cool things and taking a different life path that I never would have expected for her. And, uh, uh, it's neat. And that's kind of one of the neat things about social media that you can kind of keep an eye on, but it's also probably maybe, you sh maybe you shouldn't be keeping an eye on the woman that didn't go to homecoming with you 40 years ago. <laughs> a little more coffee. Mm. But it's Monday morning. I've got a list of things I need to get done today on the advice of a friend. I made a to-do list of what I had to accomplish as I prepare for the, the journey. <laughs> and it truly is a journey. Yes, it is. And uh, I'm excited about my day. I'm excited about drinking some more coffee and uh, maybe editing another video or two. And... Uh, uh, taken on the day. Yes, I have double birthdays tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think my 18-year-old, who oh, she's not 18 yet, I shouldn't predate her. She's going to be 18 tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe five years ago, I would have battled a little more and tried to take her out to dinner and tried to sing happy birthday and get her a birthday cake. But she's 18. <laughs> she's got a boyfriend. I mean, I certainly call and FaceTime and see her if she's available. But I'm just being realistic. I don't think my 18-year-old wants to spend her 18th birthday with her dad. I wish she did. But I understand now. And I think, uh, again, five or ten years ago, that was hard for me and uh, caused conflict. And I wanted... Uh, 
to still be, you know, top few on their priority list. But I realized, you know, my parents probably weren't top few on my priority list when I was 13 or 14 or 15 or 16 or 18. And maybe that's natural and maybe that's part of life. And maybe that's uh, part of growing. Uh, but maybe that's also why God blessed me with two little ones. Uh <laughs> My son, Augie, I got a kiss from yesterday. He has Down syndrome, so I don't mean to. Uh, uh, so sometimes as he w walks around, he has his mouth open a little bit, but he gave me a big open wide kiss, and he kind of used his tongue and licked me yesterday. And I go, oh, that was a wet willy. But it was the sweetest little wet willy, the most precious little wet willy kiss I've ever gotten. And he gave me a hug. And he's turning three tomorrow. And I'll bet you he wants to see his dad on his birthday. Good morning from Nancy, Nancy from North Carolina. Uh, so I'm sure I'll celebrate with Augie and I'll celebrate from afar with Aaron and tell her how beautiful she is and how proud I am of her and what a beautiful young lady she's become. And I can't believe she's 18. And I remember, she gets annoyed. I go, I remember when you were this big. She came. She was came into this world kind of skinny and scrawny and complaining, and in some ways, <laughs> she's maintained some of those attributes, but she's also grown into a uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful young lady uh, who I'm so so proud of, and uh, can't believe she's going to be a woman tomorrow. <laughs> Does Augie go to school tomorrow? No, Shannon. There's a uh, few things that need taken care of. Uh, thank you to Trey. Thank you for hopping on. There's a few paperwork issues. Not issues. Just paperwork and stuff that we got to get him in. But he should start probably next week. And I think he's going to love it. He's turning three and he's going to go to preschool. And he's going to ride the bus. And he's going to be a big boy. And he's going to be in classes with six or seven or eight other people. And he's going to be in an awesome, awesome school for him. And, I don't know, he's just going to be uh, so excited, I think, because he knows he's a big boy, and he's so proud of himself when he does big boy things. And his dad's so proud of him when he does big boy things, or even when he doesn't do big boy things, when he gives me a hug or sits on my lap or cuddles next to me on the couch as we were watching Sesame, Sesame Street yesterday. And it's so awesome having a little one that still wants to cuddle with you, and you, as you have your arm around, he takes his little hand, he'll play with your finger, and uh, just kind of sit there until the part of Sesame Street he doesn't like is over, and he complains, and he'll go, ba 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 ba, and that means Cookie Monster. And, or he'll go, <laughs> and that means Oscar the Grouch, or he'll go, ah, 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 and that means Count, so I know what <laughs> episode of Sesame Street he wants me to turn to. Sometimes I try and negotiate with them and watch the episode of Sesame Street I want to watch. Because <laughs> just because I'm 55, I have feelings too. And I have favorites too. And don't I get a vote? <laughs> Aren't we taking this <laughs> women and children first a little too far? <laughs> Almost like we're not even people anymore. <laughs> like we're excited to go down with the ship. <laughs> it's our civic duty. Hey, this kind of sucks. <laughs> this water's getting cold and it's getting really deep. <laughs> I think I'm starting to lose consciousness a little bit. <laughs> but it's my lot in life. Mm. But anyway, hey Austin, thank you so much for following the creator. And if anybody news out there, I hope you... Enjoy my show. I go live most mornings, uh, move around a lot, had a volatile last life, <laughs> last 55 years, made a lot of choices. Some were probably poor, uh, but they made me the guy I am sitting in front of you, and I kind of like the guy I am sitting in front of you. Uh, but I have a lot of adventures coming, I believe, in the next couple of weeks, and I'm sure I'll uh, keep hopping on live and share little nuggets of my journey uh, that is life. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, it's Monday morning. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to pouring some more coffee, sitting down on a nice soft chair, 
spending maybe a couple hours editing videos and putting some videos out there on various social media platforms. I want to thank you so much for joining today. I so appreciate you. It means a lot that you guys hop on and listen to me ramble every day and uh, follow along in my journey. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. I hope you had a great, great weekend. Uh, hope you're feeling good. Hope you're working on yourself a little bit. And again, it starts from within. Be kind to yourself. Don't even commit to being kind to yourself today. Be kind to yourself right in this moment. Say something nice to yourself. Say you're pretty or you're smart or you're funny or you're kind or you're a good human being. And, uh, you know, try and remember to do it again in an hour. But it's habits are easy to forget. And that's why we got to ingrain them in our life and our daily routine. And tomorrow morning when you wake up in bed and your mind starts racing and you have negative thoughts bouncing around, uh, catch yourself and be grateful for a couple, a few things and be kind to yourself and say something nice to yourself. And as you get out of bed, you're going to make your bed. <laughs> you're going to go out, go about your day with a little better attitude and you're going to bring that kindness to the world around you and hopefully, uh, make a difference in your world. And, uh, yeah, I wish that for you. And again, thank you for joining. I uh, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.